Hey guys, in this video we are going to be looking at the CSTR design equation, the constant stirred tank reactor, and we're also going to be determining the residence time that will be required for a particular reaction and given concentrations. And so to begin with, on the left here in green I've drawn what a CSTR looks like. We have some flow into our system. This flow rate will flow rate FA0 will denote the number of moles of a component A that I have entering our system in the inlet stream per time. We have a flow rate exiting our reactor called FA, the number of moles of A that are leaving our reactor per time. And then inside of our uh, constant stirred tank reactor, we have a concentration CA as well as some volume V. And CA, the important thing to make note of with uh, CSTRs is that because we assume quite often that they're well mixed, that means they are homogeneous throughout, the concentration is the same throughout, uh, the concentration of your outlet stream will be the same as the concentration of the reactor itself, but that that differs from your inlet concentration. So the kind of tricky thing to, to wrap your head around is the fact that you have a concentration in your inlet stream that essentially immediately turns into an overall concentration inside of your reactor that is different from the initial concentration. And so looking at our uh, design equation that we have, or I'm sorry, our uh, balance equation that we have that applies to every single one of our systems, um, quite often we will be making a steady state assumption. I call this the STST assumption. And in that case, it tells us that we have no time derivatives. Uh, they're all equal to zero. So that means that the number of moles of A inside of our reactor is constant. The flow rates are constant. The volume of our reactor is constant. And consequently, um, that also tells us that uh, we can make some very nice assumptions setting this term to zero. And the other thing that we're going to do is make use of the fact that uh, the because our reactor is well mixed, so if it's well mixed, then RA is not a function of the volume. Um, it does not care where you are inside of that reactor. So what we're able to do is simplify this term. So we've had zero is now equal to FA naught minus, I'm sorry, this uh, equation right here is incorrect. Um, FA naught minus FA, FA naught minus FA, and then plus and what we'll have here is RA times the volume of a reactor. And that's because we're able to pull RA out and we have the integral from zero to volume of dV and that's just V. Okay, and so um, this is the point at which we are in this uh, design equation derivation. And so the next thing that we're gonna make use of here is that what we really care about is looking at how the rate of our reaction or the volume that we're gonna need inside of our reactor uh, is dependent on the other parameters that we have present. And so um, the point that we get to, if we wanted to know like how big of a reactor do we need, so how big of a CSTR is needed, because this is a huge job you're gonna have as a uh, reactor design engineer, so we ask this question, and if we solve for V in this equation right here, what we're going to find is that V is equivalent to FA0 minus FA divided by the rate of reaction that we have present. And before we go any farther, um, just think about this intuitively before you get deep into the math. This is basically telling us that if we have a really fast rate of reaction, we don't need that big of a volume. Um, and also, if we wanted to have big flow rates, then we're going to need a bigger volume, and that should make intuitive sense. Um, but another very interesting thing happens here, and that has to do with uh, flow rates. And if we're dealing with liquid systems, which most of the time we are, so if liquid, there's no gas phase present, so this means it's incompressible, what we can say is that for our flow terms like FA0, this is equivalent to some volumetric flow rate times a concentration, and I'm gonna call this concentration CA0. And then the outlet uh, flow rate will also be equivalent to the same volumetric flow rate because we're at steady state again, times another concentration that uh, existed inside of our reactor as well as the outlet stream. And so when we look at this, oh, sorry, 
when we look at the numerator of our volume term right here, and we plug and chug, we can pull out this volumetric flow rate, uh, which I denote with a little v, and we get CA naught minus CA divided by the rate we have of our reaction. And if we recall tau, which is our residence time, um, tau is equivalent to V, the volume of your reactor, divided by the volumetric flow rate of your reactor. And so if we move and divide this term here, what we will get is that the residence time inside of our reactor is equivalent to the inlet concentration of a component A minus the outlet concentration of component A divided by the rate of reaction of your system. And so basically tau and volume are very closely related as we just saw. What this tells us is that, you know, if we have a very slow reaction, it's gonna increase the residence time that is required inside of our reactor to achieve the same yield, to convert the same amount of product. So this should make very intuitive sense when you think about this equation. So this thing here is the star of the show when you are thinking about how big of a reactor you should have, how big of a CSTR specifically you should have when you're at steady state and you're dealing with liquid phase uh, flows, which most often you are. And what we're also seeing here is that like the bigger the uh, demand you have to convert your product, which we're gonna get to this in future videos, but this difference, the the bigger the difference you want to have between your inlet concentration and your outlet concentration, that will also drive up your residence time. So if you wanted to convert all of your product to, like if you wanted CA to be zero, you will have maximized this difference in concentration and this will have uh, greatly increased your residence time. And we also know for other reasons that uh, achieving 100% yield is very difficult and time consuming. So this equation right here should make a lot of intuitive sense to you guys and uh, as well as the reaction the rate of your reaction so like thinking about it from another angle if uh, your rate of reaction is very fast that's going to drive down your residence time because you're going to have a bigger term in your denominator so it's the the rate of your reaction is inversely proportional to the residence time required inside of your CSTR that you're designing Okay, and so um, that's going to wrap things up for this video. Uh, I hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions.